So good morning, we're back on this Audi Q10. We're about to start removing the intake manifold to access the fuel injectors. I've already got the plastic trim covers off and the brace off at the back of the engine, the air induction system out because I got the headlight out, that's another issue. Uh, let's take little video clips along the way strategically. Most of this looks pretty straightforward. Just vacuum hoses and routings to take note of. And we'll pull the upper intake off and then have a look and see what's next. So disconnect all the electrical connectors. There's one to the intake manifold runner tuner. Disconnect the vacuum hoses that are attached. 12 bolts around the outside perimeter of the intake manifold. Uh, electrical connectors disconnected back here and tucked back. There's probably a couple of more that I missed. This one on the throttle body, I'm going to do that. Now, my manifold was stuck pretty good, so I used a, a small pinch bar to go in underneath the valve cover here. Sorry, valve cover. Over top of the um, valve cover and pry up on the manifold like so. And it should just lift off there. I know I got one more connector back here I have to unplug. So this crankcase ventilation hose is a bit of a challenge. It's rigid plastic. So there's a, a small retaining screw right here in the corner that holds it down to that ear. And then you have to pry it up slightly. You see there's a raised shoulder. And at the same time wiggle it towards the back of the car. And it'll pop out. There's an O-ring seal on it. So there it is with the upper intake off. Now it would be a little easier to get at and see that that pressure sensor way down in here that I was trying to replace the other day that I actually did replace. So the lower intake manifold has to come off now so we can get at the fuel rail under here because that's where the injectors are. The injectors are down under here. Just a note of caution here, if you were taking this apart with no problem, there would be residual pressure in this high pressure fuel rail of upwards of 500 PSI. So you better be prepared for that when you loosen off that line. Put a rag over it to relieve the pressure and catch it. In this case, because I have leaking fuel injectors, I had very little pressure in the lineup by the time I got to this point. Now I've removed all the fasteners from the fuel rail and the lower intake manifold section and it says just to remove it but mine appeared to be stuck on there, so we're gonna have to figure out a method of uh, removing it. I got the high pressure lines disconnected. Okay, carry on. So the service literature says after you remove the fasteners that hold down this aluminum cover here, just simply remove this piece. Well, mine is corroded onto these dowels. There's three dowels and I can't get it off. I've sprayed penetrating fluid on it and I'm tapping on it, but the the dowels are not releasing so this is not cooperating so this is what I'm doing to release this I took a small screwdriver and I tapped it between the aluminum retainer and the fuel rail and then a piece of 5 16 steel fuel line and I'm tapping the retain or the dowel down as I'm prying up on this aluminum piece and it's coming slowly So there's the other side off. Again, pry up between the fuel rail and the aluminum retainer and then tap these dowel pins back down because they're rusted or corroded right in the aluminum to similar metals. Won't stop recording. So there's the fuel rail removed from the driver's side. Just wiggle up on that connector or on that rail on both ends. Keep wiggling, wiggling, and it'll finally come off. Now for the other side. So the service manual shows a little tool to pull these injectors out. They are stuck in the cylinder head, obviously. Have a look at a new injector here. There's the new injector. There is a little groove around the top of the injector and the factory has a tool for grabbing that and pulling straight up on it so I'm gonna have to try to fabricate something because I'm afraid if I just pry up on that plastic body it's gonna break off so we're gonna have to find something that uh, 
goes through and, and on each side of the injector and pulls directly up on pushing down on the head gently. So after a bit of fabrication I think I have a homemade puller that's going to go in and grab the injector by that groove and push down on the cylinder head gently and pull up on the injector at the same time. This is a new injector just test fitted in here so it should work. We'll see what happens. So there's my homemade puller installed. I'm going to have to slide two pieces of flat bar underneath the bolts because the it's going to go into the intake port here, so I'm going to put two pieces of uh, 1 8 flat bar under those pusher, pusher bolts. Well, that didn't work. All that did was break the top plastic of the injector. So I'm going to try grabbing it by this part here. I believe that's steel right straight through, so hopefully that'll pull it out. Plan B. Well, I managed to get it out with a heel bar and a pair of vice grips on the end of the injector. Man, they're tight in there. Wow. So we ran into another small snafu. It turns out that the parts uh, shipper short shipped me the uh, retainers for this thing. There's little retainers that go down underneath the injector. They get destroyed when you pull the injector out. And anyways, I've got to order those. I'm going to carbon blast the intake ports. They're not that bad considering, but there is some carbon deposits in there. And considering we're right at this position right now, it doesn't make sense not to do it while we're here. And I'm also going to smoke test this air injection line. This line here is for the air injection system. Make sure that there's no cracks and leaks in it because that's a common problem apparently. And it did have a problem with the air injection pump which lives down underneath the right headlight there. And I've got that on order but I'm just trying to be proactive and make sure that we don't have any at least at least any obvious problems there could be still carbon deposits in the air injection ports which apparently is very common but we won't know until uh, we fix the air pump put this all back together again and see how it runs so I'm gonna pull the other side apart and then clean the intake ports and clean up the engine and put it aside until we get the rest of the parts required so here's my setup for carbon blasting these intake ports with a big drop cloth over top of the engine because you're going to get some fallout, big piece of plastic. I cut a little slit where the intake port is, insert the adapter, turn on the vacuum cleaner, and then insert the walnut shell blaster into the intake port, of course making sure beforehand that the intake valves are both closed. So we'll have a look at uh, what it looks like after and we'll do a before and after in a second. So I've got the driver's or passenger side bank done. You can see the valves look nice and clean now in there. That's this one here looks pretty good. So I'm just getting ready to do the other bank now. I just wanted to show you what it looks like before and after. You can't really see it, but it's pretty nasty in there, pretty carboned up. Uh, I had run top engine cleaner through this, but I don't think it helped much. Let's see if we can, there we go. So, that's the before, and you just saw the after. 